we continue our conversation with Kevin Donahue, master salesman, serial entrepreneur, and leverage member in part two of Testament of a True Entrepreneur, How to Master Any Industry. Listen in as Kevin shares his top secrets with getting ahead in business and creating a success mindset. So we, we had a nice dinner the other night and we've chatted over, over the years too. And I don't know if you got this from sports, which is why I was asking if you ever did high level sports. But when you listen to like Michael Phelps, Phelps or, or Usain Bolt or some of these like world-class people, right? Part of their training is to visualize the race a lot, right? Like they, yeah. they run through the race in their head, right? To the point like where by the time they get into the race, they've already done it like thousands and thousands of times. And from our conversation just uh, two nights ago at dinner, I saw a really big parallel between the way that you operate and how high level world class athletes operate in the sense, how you got your fiance, you visualized what you wanted ahead of time, right? Like you completely mapped out the end goal before you even started the race. Um, Same thing with how you were describing uh, your business. Like you wrote, I mean, I'd love for you to, to explain this more, but you wrote a three-year note, a, a note postdated three years from now to your co-founders on what the future would look like, right? So you started visualizing the end before you even start. And I just started thinking after that dinner that we had, what you're doing in business is what pro athletes or world-class athletes do in sports. Yeah. I don't know, if, did you ever see that parallel? I, I have at times, because like you mentioned, Tiger Woods would say he's played the entire course 15 times before he steps on mm-hmm. onto the, uh, the golf course. And so, uh, so yeah, like, you know, and this comes from really reading and studying and being around uh, really interesting and powerful people. Mm-hmm. It's because, you know, anything we do in life is just an idea. And so if we're able to frame our ideas in a way or frame, uh, you know, what our brain thinks about the future, we can actually live into it. And I see that it just works. I mean, it's almost scientific for me. It's, it's yeah. very practical. And it's, I, I call it, uh, you know, uh, remembering the future. You know, it's like, if we can remember the past, like, why not remember the future? Like, we can actually create it out of thin air. And if you study, I mean, the people, I mean, listen, I don't know if there's anyone out there who's listened to more Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. speeches than me. And his whole idea, that I have a dream speech. I mean, he speaks into existence, something that wasn't there. You know, he, and, and the way he does it is so amazing because he creates rapport by speaking a context that was here. Five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today, Abraham Lincoln, right? Signed the Emancipation Proclamation. Then he goes on to affirm the four founders and the founding fathers, the Declaration of Independence. So he creates this, yeah, we have this great thing. Then he goes into, I have a dream, right? And so like listening to that time and time again, or or if you ever studied Teddy Roosevelt as a young man, like he was a sickly young man and he built himself into this powerhouse, you know? And so... So I kind of really just study the people in history who I wanted to be a little bit like. Like, what if I was this much like Martin Luther King Jr. or Gandhi or right. Jesus or Teddy Roosevelt or whoever it may be? Like, let me study these people who changed the world and see if I can take on a piece of them. And then I see it too with the athletes. And I realize like my imagination is maybe my most important aspect because that's what creates my future. And to go back to what you were saying is uh, to even take it in a level further. I think gratitude, like love and gratitude are probably the two most powerful emotions that actually have the, the potential to transform us. And so I would write, whenever I partner with someone, whenever I go into a new relationship, I don't care what the relationship is, you know, you and I go into business together, I'll write a thank you note from you to me three years from now. And I'll put the date three years from now. I, and think, it's, like, I think it's such a cool exercise like i'm gonna I'm, I, I really want to start doing it I, myself because it makes yeah. so much sense i call it reverse gratitude uh-huh. you know so it's like i get to experience the gratitude a thank you note from you to me from the future it's very very powerful and, and so and it gets everyone aligned with with like a longer term vision too yeah. right one of the biggest issues with, with people getting into business is people might not be aligned on company vision or even on each other's personal visions right and what you do is you start off by getting everyone together on a common vision from the very beginning, which is so crucial that no one really does. From a place of a thank you note. Thank you notes are always awesome to receive and they're always awesome to give. Just think about how you feel when you receive a thank you note from someone. Like, wow, I feel so good. And when you give one, how it makes you feel. So it's this, this it's really powerful. So, so you physically write this thank you and you, yeah. and you, and you post it to them. 
No, I don't. I don't. I keep it. They don't. They oh, sometimes you post, never know. You, you keep it for yourself. Yeah. Do you share it with the, with them ever? Or um, I think I have once or twice, but usually I don't. So I, it's more to keep yourself aligned with what your vision is for what you're what you're going to embark on with someone. Yeah, and potentially their vision too. Right. Like, what would I have to do if you know three years from now you got you we go into business? Like, what would have to happen for you, dear Kevin? Thank you so much. I can't believe you've made me a million dollars and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I can't believe, you know, now I'm putting my kid through college or whatever it might be. And, and do you, have you ever tried doing this as an exercise with all the stakeholders where everyone like at the beginning, uh, like would take this new company that you're doing with, yeah. these, with these guys that created the algorithm. Did you ever think about getting in a room and at the same time, everyone writing a thank you yeah. note and then reading it to each other to make sure that people are on the same page? I have mentioned that to them, but no, we haven't done that as an exercise yet. I'd be curious. I'd be yeah. curious to know how that goes. Yeah, it's a good idea. Um, so another thing that we talked about at dinner, which I think the audience would really be interested in hearing is, you know, there's all these personality type of tests like DISC and Colby, yeah. right? And you were mentioning one that I'd never heard of before. And you are talking about the concept of a star and a mechanic. So I would love for you to kind of explain that because I think it's an interesting, an interesting model that I hadn't seen before. Yeah, it's really great. I meant to send you the link to that, but it's my friend Roger Hamilton, and, and I've been I, Roger. If you're listening to this, I've been promoting your stuff for the last five years, uh, and it's because it's really good. He's really put a thought. He has to a it. good affiliate deal with you. Huh? I, I know. I need to get an affiliate deal with him. I think Gotta he get has a link one. up on right? that. <laughs> right. But uh, he has this test. It's called Wealth Dynamics, and uh, what he's done is he's broken down. Uh, wealth, like creating wealth into eight personality types, which is great because if you take the Colby test, for example, I'm a 3393, three, but there's no context to that. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean anything unless you had a guidebook that told you what a three was and a three was and a nine was a three was, you wouldn't know. DISC is interesting. I mean, uh, it's good. All these are great. I've taken them all because I really want to know who I am, not only so I know, but so I can explain myself to other people. Myers Briggs is another good one. But with, uh, with wealth dynamics, it's really about entrepreneurial flow. And it's this isn't a test you'd give your employees. It's for someone who's an entrepreneur and you want to figure out where you play best. It goes back to sort of what I was mentioning before about playing the bass guitar, being the lead singer in a band, or being on a basketball court. You know, if you're a, if you're a center, you don't want to be playing point guard. You know, it'll, mm -hmm. you won't have much success there. So with wealth dynamics, he has eight personality types. And you know, if you look at it as a square and there's a line down the middle, and to the right is extroverted and to the left is introverted and so right up in the middle you have a creator and a creator would be like a uh, Walt Disney or Richard Branson you know they come up with creative ideas and they hand them off right and that's their power and if you go to the right you have a star and a star would be and this is if you think about it it's how people make money a star would be someone like an Oprah Winfrey or a Madonna or you know you name the star uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger they make their money by being the star and so their whole goal is to, you know, raise the star up so that they can make more money. Uh, you know, Oprah Winfrey, she's not selling tickets. She's not putting on the lights. She's not doing the accounting. Oprah Winfrey just shows up and she's herself. And that's it. Uh, and then as you move to the far right, you have a supporter. And that would be someone like a Jack Welch or a Steve Ballmer. You know, Jack Welch didn't invent GE, but he took GE to a whole new level. And they're sort of enthusiastic. They're sort of visionaries. They're evangelical, I'd say, about the mission, you know. Mm -hmm. And then on the far right, down in the corner, you'd have a deal maker. And a deal, classic deal maker would be like a Donald Trump. And I'm just using all of uh, right, Roger's right. Uh, personalities. And Donald Trump has made his money by making deals, you know, good deals, bad deals. And then as you get towards the middle here, down uh, on the bottom in the middle, you have what would be a trader. And that'd be some classic Wall Street trader or a George Soros who makes his money trading in currencies. And then you get to the sort of the, the introvert side, upper left-hand corner, you'd have uh, what he calls a mechanic. And that would be a Ray Kroc or a, uh, like a Jeff Bezos, like putting a system around something like the system of someone who loves putting systems and processes around someone like yourself. Yeah. And then the extreme interior would be what he call is a Lord. And a Lord would be someone who crosses the T's, dots the I's, maybe a CIO, a CFO, um, you know, someone who is, uh, you know, counting everything and making sure everything runs correctly. And then the bottom left would be a, an accumulator, and that would be like a, a Warren Buffett. Mm -hmm. You know, doesn't buy, doesn't trade, doesn't sell, doesn't you know? He just so, yeah. buys and holds, right? Yeah, and that's yeah. so he accumulates. And so if you look at that model, like the ideal circumstance would be to be a uh, to have a creator who comes up with the ideas, and then like a supporter to bring those ideas out to the world, and then a mechanic to systematize the process 
And then of course you'd need some sort of Lord to oversee the accounting and the taxes and all that stuff. So that's sort of the ideal situation I look for. A star is sometimes important. It depends on the business, but it's not always important. Right. That's interesting. Cause I mean, obviously with my background in trading, I would have thought at first, Oh, I'm, I'm the trader. But after we, after you explained it to me, yeah, it's clear. I'm a mechanic. And are there different, like if you're going into business with someone, would you go through this process and use the results of this to determine if it's going to be a good partnership? I did it with my last partnership. Yes. Gotcha. So which, what was he, what, right. where do you, yeah. So, so, and then are there certain kinds of combinations where it's like, you know what, like, Two stars are probably not going to work out together. Two stars will never work out. Together. Right. So, are there certain combinations where it's like, hell no, let's not even go there? Yeah. And then there's certain that are just natural fits. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so my partners are one's a creator. Mm -hmm. With so, and you have like sort of subtypes too. So, I'm a, I'm a supporter with star and deal maker qualities. And remember, this is about entrepreneurial flow. Like, where am I? Not only am I best, but where do I love being the most? You know, where am I going to make the biggest impact? So. I can take the stage and give a nice talk, but I don't want that to be my living. You know, I don't want to live on the stage and spotlight. I can take the spotlight, right. but then I want to kind of go back to being a supporter. Like I actually love lifting other people up into the spotlight. Uh, so my partners now, one's a creator and one's a mechanic. And it's perfect for, for, so for what we're doing. you have a supporter, a creator, a mechanic, and then you obviously have the deal, the deal qual deal maker qualities and some star it's qualities magic. as well. But, so that seems to be like, a really solid mix. Really solid. Yeah. So, so like, so right now what's happening and I told them, I said, sit back, you're not going to have to do much more than you're already doing. I said, but it's going to be get a little bit crazy for you because I'm going to start bringing people in that you can't believe. And it's already happened. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, and so, uh, so we are, we've had just back to back meetings and these guys stuff, but I need a mechanic to put a system around the work I'm doing. Right. So if there's no system, it becomes chaotic, right? Me on my own, I'm just not that good. And it goes back to, you know, I did play team sports growing up. I'm a better, you know, there's individual sports like tennis or uh, other individual sports. And I'm a team player. Like I like to you know, assist. I like to rebound. I like to throw the ball every once in a while. But right. so I look for that, that team dynamics. And right now we have it because, and I'm fascinated, you know, Steve the other day came up with this idea and I was like, that is genius. Like, how did you, he just created out of thin air. Mm -hmm. I know I can say a few words to him and the next day he'll have like the creation there. I'm like, wow, man. And I know I don't have that skill set. No matter how hard I worked, I wouldn't be able well, to do that. Without you, he wouldn't have had the idea. So I he mean, wouldn't it really have takes, the idea. It takes it takes the whole team. It takes a team. And so what's yeah. really interesting is watching the trajectory and me being in my flow, them being in their flow. And we actually, before I did a proposal to talk about our new partnership, in the proposal, I mapped out where we could have victory by us playing where we're great. You know, because what people often do is they look for people who are like them. And they want to partner well, with people who are like them. It's it's a big mistake. It's I mean, a big mistake. You having people that have completely, uh, you know, orthogonal skill sets really opens people's minds to thinking in different ways. But also, you can't be good at everything. You know, right. I suck at most things. Right. right. It's just what I'm good at. I'm really good at. Yeah. And and you, and you have to recognize too. And if you recognize and nurture, right, like the other person's awesomeness, so to speak, man, it's like they're gonna feel more like they're in their flow. Like, our, like Joel loves systems. Like, right. okay, well, I can do this, 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 and this. I can create this. We can have the email go here and then go there. Okay, great. And I'm like, let's do it. So we're creating this this whole uh, business now based on that. And we're going to hire. So in the, the way we hire is to support each person's, you know, best uh, best ability or unique ability. No, that sounds great. Yeah. All right. So we had a few questions. Um, okay. So Morris asked, uh, how do you figure customer lifetime value? Uh, it's a great question. So, you, you know, you have to look at, for example, in my skincare business, on average, uh, so we had a continuity program. And, uh, for example, our month one was about 70% of our clients would stay on for month one. Month two would be about 30%. Month three, we had about a 50% attrition rate. Month three would be about 15%. So knowing that our, that our, that our, uh, that our, our product was about ninety dollars. We just do the math around that, and our average lifetime value of a client was about one point five to one point eight months on average. Mm -hmm. We have a, lot, a big fall off, and then we just do the math behind that. So you just figure out, you know, if you have a client that comes in, uh, for example, in the software world, uh, the White House deal is now probably 
Well, the U.S. Customs and Border Protection deal is probably now a two to three million dollar deal, lifetime value since 2006, right? But you have to figure that out. Like, what is, uh, you know, what's your upsells? What is your your cost? All of these things, you know. So once you know that, you you know how much to spend on a client. That's what's important. Like, for example, Joe Polish here at the Genius Network, he has the 25K group, so it's $25,000 to join. He knows the average person stays on for about three years, let's say. So that's $75,000. Yeah. yeah, so now what are you willing to spend? What are your costs associated with acquiring a client? So, you know, what would you be willing to pay for a $75,000 client? You know, and the answer is really $70,000 or more, like, you know, up until whatever the, the profit is, depending on your, on your right. cost, your expenses. So you just have to look at, you know, what's the one year or five year uh, lifetime of your client. Sometimes it's just a, it's a one hit and that's it. So if someone comes well, in. That's, that's the easiest one to calculate, right? Like if, if someone's only going to buy your thing one time, yeah. you know, well, you it, know what it is. And when you, and you, when you get this, you really start to understand that business is simply arithmetic. Mm -hmm. Either the arithmetic adds up or it doesn't. And I've been in businesses where it did and then it didn't. And then I lost everything. And so you want, I look at, uh, I look at predictability and I look at, um, so I love the McDonald's model. Like the McDonald's model is, and, and people, if you understand McDonald's model, they're not in the burger business, they're not in the real estate business, they're in the eyeballs business. So they don't build a store until they count how many feet walk by or how many cars drive by. And then, then, they're, then, then they're in the real estate business because they, want, they know that every day, the psych, it goes from eyeballs to psychology. The psychology is they know every day people wake up and they have this, we all have this one thing in common and it's called hunger. And, and and their model of solving that problem is cheap food that tastes good quickly, mm -hmm. and that's it, right? And so they know that if they know that, uh, let's say six percent of the people that drive by will stop and spend between ten and twelve dollars on the ticket, and they back all of that into the arithmetic, and that's their profit model. And so, like a lifetime value for McDonald's might be ten dollars per ticket, and that's it, right? But then they say, how can we increase that lifetime value? Hey, let's give them a coupon at checkout. Mm -hmm. So they'll come back, you know, later, later today, uh, Starbucks does a really good job at this. Hey, come back later, you get a, a latte for 50% off or whatever it is, right? Like how can you increase that lifetime value? And that's the goal of a good business person is to think, how can I increase the lifetime value of this client? Right. Um, and the lifetime value, like take, take for instance, like a subscription model type of service, right? Mm -hmm. That has monthly recurring revenue. The lifetime value calculation is you take the monthly recurring revenue and you divide it by the, the churn rate or the cancellation rate. Right. So that's the formula, it's arithmetic basically. But if you charge $200 a month and every month you get a 10% drop off, you know, the lifetime value is $2,000 per person, right? If there's no add-ons or anything like that. So um, it's super important, you know, you always wanna be maximizing how much per person you're getting and at the same time minimizing, all, minimizing your drop off. Those are the two dynamics that affect the lifetime value. Yeah, and then this is where it's important to have someone like a mechanic or a system person because then it becomes predictable. It's like, you know, business is never 100% predictable, but you want to make it as yeah. predictable as possible. It's like, okay, I put this much money in, I get this much so, money out. So, um, yeah, I mean, now that I know I'm a mechanic, it makes sense because we're looking for leading indicators at leverage. So bef what affects cancellation rate, right? So I'm not even... I mean, I care about lifetime value, I care about churn, but I'm more focused on the leading indicators that can help me to predict where those numbers are gonna be going. Right. So I'm super focused on things like, that are unique to my business, but like median time since last activity of someone using the service, Right. right? Because that's a really strong leading indicator to my cancellation rate. If I can get people using the service more, and I use median so that, you know, there aren't, um, edge cases or tail events, right? So, um, but whatever your business is, it's important to also look, what's that leading indicator that's going to affect your lifetime value? Well, and what's interesting too is McDonald's now is seeing a great spike in revenue by using the kiosks. Oh yeah, and a, and a, and a decrease in costs, clearly. <laughs> Increase in costs. But, but what's interesting is, and I, and I thought about this. Can you pre-order now too on an app? I'm sure, I don't know. You can at Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I, all I know is I was in the, 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 the Tyranny, Tenerife, which is in the Canary Islands last year, and they had the big screens for McDonald's, you know, and I was like, wow, this is really cool. And I realized because now it's completely 100% personal choice, no human being, because people will reject because someone asks, or they don't like the way the person looks, or, you know, it's like this, this but when you have a screen there with just pictures, 
it gets amazing so the whole point is like there's there's the what you just mentioned about you know like how do we maintain people and then it's like how do we get more up front yeah like how do we create this this bigger thing where people are coming in spending more money and then that increases lifetime value and th there's all kinds of ways to increase lifetime values we mentioned it earlier one is just putting a zero on the end of your price and you know you've oh. 10x your price so now oh, the yeah. lifetime value so you, goes up you increase your revenue or you decrease your cancellation or hopefully you're doing both that's right exactly <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> um well, I want to be respectful of your time. This was all amazing. Um, really quick, though, you are a client of Leverage. I'd love to hear, like, how are you using the service to help you with all, all of your businesses? Yeah, so so right now, uh, the two big projects we've been working on, they're not that big. I mean, they're big for me, but for what you guys do, you make it really easy. So we've been working on um, with my surf and surf organization. So I lead uh, trips to Nicaragua and El Salvador and Costa Rica. We build homes and feed families. Uh, in impoverished neighborhoods and then we take people surfing volcano hiking we call it adventure travel with purpose and this is uh you know sort of my passion project i lead executives and entrepreneurs down to these amazing places and you know the, the problem with me is i'm great at going out and telling this amazing story and people are like i want to go or the, i mean you told me I, I, i'm in for this november <laughs> yeah <laughs> like the thing people say more than anything else is i've always wanted to do something like that you know but there was usually some sort of church in the way or something in the way or some organization and so that's but then the problem became you know i put my fiance in charge of, of of running it and she's not a mechanic either she's the same as me and so, uh, you know, what was happening was people were getting lost in our email cycle and then no follow up. I mean, literally no process making hate me for this. <laughs> it's terrible. Well, that's why, we're that's why you're here, right? Yeah. Um, so I put up a... Uh, I didn't realize that we we're... So we we're helping you with the surf and surf? surf oh, yeah. Surf and surf? You guys have that's built awesome. this amazing uh, workflow for us. So we have a Trello board now and, it, and we don't need anything complex. We're a simple mm. organization. Uh -huh. It's really just getting... It's really just us having a follow up system so we don't forget about people and they're not stuck in an email. So what happens now is they come into our form on surfandserve.com and they click submit. It goes into a Trello board and that person is set up for a phone call and it's auto automatically sent a... Uh, do we do the phone call or is no, it... No, we do. Gotcha. Right now. Um, Calendly. I, I wonder if we can do the phone call. Yeah, you call could at you. some point. Yeah. yeah. So then a Calendly link is sent to them to schedule a phone call. Uh -huh. Then that goes over to the next phase on the board and then it goes... And once the phone call is had, it goes over here and then an invoice sent and it's really great. So we've, we've been testing... Uh, testing that system and that's like and don is helping you with that oh yeah don has done a great job yeah she's she's, she, she's awesome charge. i and wonder if she's on this call yeah um and then ludovic put it all together it's been great and then so now and i was testing that with that business because that business is is, is fairly simple for us it's straightforward um but then we have i have my other business neural performance academy it's the brain business you mentioned where we rewire people's brains for high performance it's a high ticket item uh and the same type of thing people are getting lost in my emails or not getting communicated with and so now we're using the exact same process for the brain lab. So it's really awesome. just an enrollment process that you guys have put together has been really, really helpful. That's, that's, that's great to hear. Um, so where can people find out about all these things? Because we've mentioned so many, I mean, you're involved with so many things that are super, I think, interesting for, for the audience. Yeah. Surf and Serve, what's, what's the website? Surfandserve.com. Really and that is going to Costa Rica this year in November, most yeah, likely, uh -huh. instead of Nicaragua, because it's a level Nic three. Uh... Nicaragua's having some troubles right <laughs> now. And we and I, I would go, but I wouldn't meet other people there right now yeah. because of the turmoil. But yeah, so we're going to go to Costa Rica and Guanacaste this, this Thanksgiving. So surfandserve.com. Um, and what about the other? So Neuro, neuroperformanceacademy.com. Neuroperformance Academy is my partnership with the top functional neurologists in the world. Uh, the lab is really built for people with uh, concussions and brain damage. I suffered a concussion five and a half years ago from a motorcycle accident. But once I was fine, I was like, wow, what if we use this for high performance? So now what we're doing in the lab is we're re rewiring people's brains for high performance, elite athletes, executives, and entrepreneurs. And that's neuroperformanceacademy.com. We do a full lab takeover every uh, every quarter, and uh, it's all about performance. And then uh, Executive Sales Source is my consulting business. I, I take on very limited clients, uh, and I usually take them on as partnerships where I get an equity stake in the business. So uh, this is this is the the company. If you want to move from a Honda to a Ferrari, that's where yeah, going. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I usually do two day on site consults, uh, and then by that time the whole company's transformed. But then I'll I'll do follow ups for three months or longer if it's necessary. Um, and usually people, I really specialize really in technology, but also I worked with Joe. I helped him grow his business. It, it really really depends. Um, and then the the new partnership is Influence Logic, and uh, that's just our that's our. YouTube influencer space where we provide uh, offers and uh, 
the algorithm to find top influencers. So, so yeah, it's kind of a, a, a handful I mean, of things, but, <laughs> w w but listen, like working with a team like you helps me handle, I don't have to juggle. I can actually put things down and know exactly where things are going to well, be. You know, the right partnerships and the right systems allow you to, you know, to do all these things. You yeah. know, I, I do business consult. I have a company for business consulting. I have leverage. I'm writing a book right now. I don't, but you know, interviewing someone like you, I'm like, well, that's not that cool. I mean, I'm just doing like three things. I mean, some people are doing <laughs> 10 and doing not just do, anyone can do something, but you're doing them at a super high level. Yeah. Well, and I'm playing in my zone and even the skincare business, which we're all, we're ramping most of those campaigns. Now we've just found they're not as profitable as they used to be. Uh, and you know, again, like that's a business that we set up five years ago. I haven't been in that business in three years. Mm -hmm. You know, I helped build it. And then I exited stage left because it wasn't necessary for me to be there anymore. And when, when we're able to do that, when we're able to play in our zone, we don't get bogged down by stuff that's not our superpower. And so by doing that, I'm able to get into businesses, make an impact, even with Influence Logic. You know, two years from now, I should not be having much to do with that business, except for going out and just being evangelical about it and bragging about it. Right. Right. And then inviting people to participate more. So, so yeah, that's. Uh, and where can people find out about the um, the chart for the personality? Books? Oh yeah, it's great. You're gonna love it. It's uh, wealthdynamics.com. I don't have any kind of affiliate relationship. I should probably, but you'll see a video by Roger Hamilton, and Roger's really interesting and compelling. And then you'll see the chart there. And if you want to take the test, I think it's 99 bucks, I guess. But uh, it's a uh, it's worth taking if you're an entrepreneur uh, and you're looking to figure out. You'll know just by seeing the 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 test. But what's important is knowing the other dynamics so you know who to partner with. It's one thing to know yourself, but then who else do you need to recruit to be on your team or who do you need? Like for you, for example, in my other businesses, you play the role of the mechanic, mm -hmm. putting the systems together so that I don't have to, so I don't lose stuff or so I don't, you know, so I make sure I maximize well, what I'm doing. So you can be replaceable and I then eventually, you know, leave in a couple of years That's and right. have it, you know, run auto on autopilot. That's right. So um, I just, I want to thank you again. This was awesome. If if you want to also um, get in touch with Kevin, sign up at getleverage.com. You get access to a private Slack community, which Kevin, being a member of Leverage, is in that Slack community. So you can ask further questions there. And you know, take, take a look at all the websites that Kevin mentioned earlier about all of his cool ventures and, and check it out. Cool. All Thanks, right. man. Thanks. If you enjoyed this episode series, Testament of a True Entrepreneur, visit podcast.getleverage.com and download our one-page podcast cheat sheet outlining Kevin's secrets for success and other main takeaways from this episode with Kevin Donahue. Thanks for listening to the Leverage Podcast. Leverage is a premier outsourcing platform that gives you access to a team of skilled professionals who can complete any task or project. Our goal is to help people be their most efficient and productive selves. Focus on your unique ability. Let us do the rest get leverage.